more time for human rights. Give it up one more time for justice. Right, before we hear our next speaker, we're standing in a very important place. We're standing in front of the White House, right? And so we have a very important message for the man who lives there, for President Obama. So for those of you who are behind the signs, you can just turn around so we can send this message. NDAA, we say no way. 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 Our next speaker, how y'all doing? How you doing? Are y'all far up? Yeah. Y'all are all standing in the, to the backs of you is the White House, right? So are y'all far it up? Yeah. Far it up? Yeah. All right. The next speaker is Tamar Mahana, brother of Tariq Mahana, held under prolonged pre-trial of solitary confinement in the U.S. and convicted last month under broad material support charges, penalizing speech protected by the First Amendment. When I say justice, you say now. Justice, now. justice, now. justice, now. welcome to Mayor. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Can you guys hear me? I don't want anybody yelling at me to speak into the mic. Um, when I first came here, I was expecting to speak in front of the Department of Injustice. And I call it the Department of Injustice because justice selectively applied is not is no justice at all. And that's exactly what's happening with all of our fellow brothers and sisters, our fellow human beings in Guantanamo, in Bagram, in Abu Ghraib, and even domestically here in prisons like the Supermax prison. You know, ten years after ten years after these prisons were opened, it's really sad seeing how not only are these individuals who are held there deprived of their rights and tortured, but even in this country, when we have people who speak out against it, even that now is becoming is becoming criminalized. My brother, for example, my brother Tarek Mahana from Boston, Massachusetts, was a very vocal critic of what's been going on in these prisons, of what's been go what's been happening to these prisoners. Not only my brother, but other people as well, like Fahad Hashmi from New York. Afia Siddiqui from Cambridge, Massachusetts. Many people who are imprisoned here in this country for speaking out against what's happening in these prisons. And it's it, it's all the more outrageous when you hear about events like what takes place in Afghanistan where you have the kill team. You have these supposed rogue units who are going and hunting Afghanis like deer and posing in front of them for pictures, for mementos, or you have uh, what happened in Haditha in Iraq, there was a story that came out in the New York Times on December 15th talking about how in response to an IED attack that killed a Marine, uh, a troop of Marines went into a village and killed like 24 civilians. And when that happens, the government calls it collateral damage. And when we have people speaking out against it here in this country, they call it material support for terrorism. There's something deeply wrong when this is what passes for justice, and when society does not speak up. So it heartens me to see everybody here and to see a lot of young faces here because this is the generation that grew up post 9-11. And we have to ask ourselves, what kind of nation are we going to inherit? What kind of nation are we going to inherit? And then someday, what nation are we going to pass on to the next generation? Is it going to be a better one or is it going to be one like the one that we're, that, like we're inheriting here? And ten years after, ten years after these prisons have opened up, these concentration camps have opened up. It's time for them to close. It's time for these prisons to close. It's time to stop treating anybody who speaks up against them and who tries to bring people's attention to them. It's time to stop treating them like criminals. My brother has been prosecuted and convicted of providing material support to terrorism for 
placing resources online that, that tell people, anybody, in, in the English language about what happens at these facilities, about what jihad really means. You know, I mean, there's many Americans who grow up fearing what the word jihad means, fearing what these concepts mean, equating them with terrorism. Muslims are no different than you. Muslims are human beings the same way that you are, and we're no different, and there is no danger the way that the government is trying to proclaim there to be. There's no reason to be afraid. We can understand each other and love each other. We don't need to put people in prison. We don't need to selectively apply justice. Thank you very much. If you're cold, yell louder, all right? Yeah. Justice! Yeah. Justice! Yeah. Justice! Yeah. Justice! Yeah. I just want to take a second to appreciate that. I we have hundreds of people that are cold during the day. Back up. All right. Wednesday at noon, hundreds of people gather. Well, I'm still down there. Let's, let's go to the front. Let's go to the front. Obaidala, who wrote this poem. Obaidala was 17 or 18 when he was picked up. He's been there for 10 years now. He left behind a wife and a very, very young baby.